Hey friends, so this video is going to be a little bit longer than a lot of the others and um, so find a comfy spot to sit down and relax and watch. Um, this is basically about my life and my healing journey. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a long story, but uh, there's a whole lot to it. So I, as a kid, um, I grew up in a home that, um, you know, my parents took us to church pretty much every Sunday. And um, I gave my life to Jesus whenever I was nine years old, I was baptized. Um, but things weren't all that great. Uh, my home life's kind of difficult. Um, and there's a lot to that, but there's I also dealt with a lot of really negative things um, in school. I was um, bullied all throughout school. I was bullied through grade school in junior high um, to the point that I would be, I, I, I would, I would um, end up uh, going home after um, being, being beaten up by gangs of girls. Uh, there would be, I would have black eyes often and, and um, bruises all over, you know, because they would, they would beat me up. Um, it was pretty bad. It was, it was really rough. Uh, I, I dealt with that a lot. Um, it got to the point that I would, during recess, during any kind of breaks, I would hide in the bathroom because it was a safe place for me to be. And um, it's really unfortunate that I went through that. It was, it was a difficult time. Um, I learned that I felt safer. Um, I felt a lot safer at home. And oftentimes I would end up getting sick very often. And I missed a lot of school because I was sick. Um, I didn't realize at the time that what was happening around me, what was happening to me emotionally was what was causing my sickness. Um, after dealing with, with stuff at home and with being bullied for years and years, I ended up um, just rebelling because I, I, I didn't do well, you know, in junior high and high school, I pretty much had given up on life. I, I was extremely depressed. Um, and I was suicidal. Um, my parents made sure that I, I went to um, counseling. Uh, I saw a, a few counselors during that time and um, ended up getting together with uh, a guy when I was um, 15 who probably wasn't the best person for me to be with. He was, um, he was quite a rebel. That's what I was attracted to. Um, kind of made me feel alive, I suppose. Um, and so we were together uh, and whenever I was 16, I ended up getting pregnant. I ended up getting pregnant as a 16 year old. Um, and that was tough. Um, after that happened, I guess, uh, in January or February, I don't remember which month it was, in 1990, um, I decided to go to an alternative high school. They had an alternative high school where I could um, attend with other girls who had gotten pregnant. And I saw a lot of those girls and, hey, I'm glad that they, they continue to go to high school um, and, and that they decided that they, it was important for them to do that. I decided that I did not want to be one of them who was taking my kid to, um, to the nursery while I was still in school. And so I determined that I was going to get as, all of the credits that I needed as a junior and I graduated as a junior that year. Um, my son was born later that year in 1990 in September. And so, um, you know, during my pregnancy, um, before telling anybody about it, I really thought about, um, I thought about having an abortion. I, 
because it was it was the easy way out. It was what a lot of people did. Um, but I I decided no, I'm the one who messed up. And so I decided that I was going to take responsibility for my actions. And so that's what I did. I went ahead and had him. Um, and turned out that he was a huge blessing in my life. He is one of the greatest blessings in my life, really, because I was going straight downhill and, and didn't care about school, didn't care about anything. Um, and I got pregnant with him and then it was like there's something else to my life there's somebody else you know that's going to be dependent on me and so um so I had my baby boy and then he his dad and I decided to get married and um his dad had come from a really rough home life and background and and that was um you know, I, I loved him. He joined the army and we stayed together for 16 years. Um, because of because of the way that he was raised in an, in an, uh, not a healthy environment. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, our relationship was toxic and neither of us knew how to be um, a good spouse. Uh he was he was emotionally abusive and um that affected me that affected me in a lot of neg really bad ways uh i decided um after moving back that i was going to go to to college and i i didn't last very long in college um i took classes for a few years and then i decided to be a massage therapist so i went and did that um went to school for that and became a massage therapist and um, our relationship, my relationship with my ex-husband just was spiraling out of control. It just got worse and worse and worse. And um, it finally got to the point where it felt like it would be best for both of us if we got divorced. And that was a very hard decision to make. Um, my son was um, away at boarding academy whenever we made that decision. And um, we told him, basically, I don't think he was shocked about it. He, of course, he was sad, um, but it was something that, that we all decided was for the best, um, even though it was really hard on all of us. And so I get divorced. Um, I um, met my husband Richard um, in the middle of that, and um, we ended up getting married. And a lot of people didn't think that that was for the best. Um, I was involved in a church plant at the time, and I was basically told that it would have been, it, it was necessary for me to just be a martyr and stay with my ex-husband, even though um, I was just dying inside. And I, I won't go into all of that, except it was just, I took on so much guilt and shame um, because I decided that I, I had to get divorced in order just to survive, you know, just for myself. I just had to because I could see that the way that things were going, um, it, it was just really, really bad. <laughs> That's just what I'll say. It was extremely bad. And um, so, like I said, I, I took on a whole lot of guilt and shame about the fact that after my husband and I got divorced, the, the church plant totally disbanded. And, um, and that was rough for me to, to accept, to handle. I felt like that was all my fault. I felt completely like, you know, um, I had ruined the church plant that we had been a part of. And, and I know that there were a lot of bad and negative feelings towards me. And so that was rough. Um, after that, I, I married, um, Richard and, um, Within a year of us getting married, we moved to Washington State where he had gotten a job um, at 
uh, a, at a university there. And after uh, about, um, I guess, a year or two there, I started getting really sick. And I had had strange things going on whenever I was a massage therapist. I, was, I started having a lot of pain um, in my childhood all the way back then. I, I had a severe hay fever, terrible hay fever, to the point that, you know, I was allergic to grass, I was allergic to mold, I was allergic to pollen, I was allergic to weeds, I was allergic to a whole lot of animals, most of them. Um, later on, um, as an adult, I had one of those scratch tests, you know, that they do on your back, and my whole back swelled up. I mean, every single every single one of those um, was swollen. And so I was just basically allergic to everything. I even did a test during that time whenever I was still married to my ex-husband and it turns out, I, I don't remember how they tested me for it, but I was allergic to him. So it's, it's funny, but not. Um, I also, as a child, had severe um, irritable bowel syndrome and, and constipation and, and that lasted all the way through my childhood, up into um, my adulthood, it was bad. Um, always having to take stuff for that. Um, whenever I was still married to my ex-husband, I started having sleep issues and I started having to take over-the-counter medications, um, sleep medications. And like I said, constant, constantly taking allergy stuff for hay fever. Um, I had a lot of migraines and other headaches. Um, I would have sinus infections. And so um, while my ex-husband and I were still married, I decided that the best thing to do was, was to become vegan. And so I stopped eating all animal products, all of them. Um, and, and actually all of the problems, all of the, the hay fever left after I got rid of all of the dairy. Um, so that was good, that was good. That, that worked for a while. Um, after I had gotten married to Richard, uh, I started having more and more problems though. And um, we, I remember we, we went to Idaho, we went to Stanley, Idaho, and it was a beautiful place. But in the, this morning that I, I woke up in the morning there and in the little cabin that we were staying in, and I mean, all of my joints hurt. And it was like, what is going on? This has never happened before. It was so bad that morning that I tried to pick up a, a cup of coffee and my my hands hurt so much that I couldn't even hold that cup of coffee. And it was like, what is happening? And so we got back to um, Washington, to Walla Walla, where we were living. And I, I made an appointment to see my doctor. My doctor sent me to a rheumatologist I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and they also tested me for um, hypothyroidism and I tested positive for that too. Um, all throughout my, um, my life, I had had strange things going on um, all the way back in, all the way back to uh, whenever I was five, my parents noticed that I had some kind of hearing loss. And you know how um, those of you who went to public school they, they do a hearing test every single year. You know, they have this van that they bring, or this, I don't know, it's like a, a huge um, truck, basically. And they have this these soundproof rooms that they put you in for these hearing tests. And my hearing loss, um, they noticed that I, I was missing a lot of high frequencies. And it was so bad that whenever they gave me this, this hearing test that, um, you know, they would turn up these frequencies, they would turn up the volume all the way, and I had these um, headphones on, and the people outside of this soundproof booth could hear, and and I wasn't, I wouldn't able to, I couldn't hear those high frequencies. And so over the years, uh, that hearing loss just got worse and worse and worse. Um, I remember Oh, it was back in the 90s. I was tested again. It was like a 75% loss. And, um, and then uh, in the 2000s, I was tested again and it was an 80 something percent loss. Um, my last hearing test, it was up to, I think I, I had lost, um, I think it was about 
86% loss. And, um, and after, I haven't gone back. I haven't gone back. Um, so they always assumed, doctors always assumed whenever they would give me uh, the autoimmune test that it was just because that my hearing loss was based on that. Um, but the, the thing was, is that I had, I had all kinds of issues going on that I didn't know about until um, that day that I was tested for RA. So after that, my health just continued to deteriorate. Um, and my husband and I were just going, what is happening? You know, um, we, we love to cross country ski and we would go out skiing and I started feeling you know, I, I started feeling like I just didn't have enough energy to do this. It was just a struggle to ski. It was a struggle to go hiking. It was a struggle to do anything. And um, and I had been um, I had been working as a prayer ministry coordinator for the university there. It was a, a Christian university, and that was too much. Uh, I had to stop doing that. Um, I was a potter, uh, created pottery, and I was selling in galleries and. It was getting to the point where I could go in in the mornings and work, and and that was a huge struggle. And I would go in in the mornings, I would create my pottery, and all afternoon I was in bed. I was just totally exhausted. I was wiped out, and I was like, "What is happening?" You know, um, <clears throat> I went to uh, a, a naturopath because um, allopathic medicine wasn't helping, and we weren't getting any answers. I had been to every kind of specialist, and um, and the naturopath basically diagnosed me. She took a, she did a bunch of tests, and we found out that I had severe adrenal fatigue, and it just continued to get worse. Chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, at one point, I was diagnosed with, and I, I probably have missed a few things. This is a list of, of everything that I could remember right now. Um, like I said, allergies, the hay fever. Um, uh, IBS, constipation since childhood, headaches, sinus infections. Anytime I had any kind of dairy, I would get a sinus infection that would last for months on end. Um, I was having migraines. I ended up having blood sugar issues. So I was having to watch that all the time. I found out that I had methylation issues. Um, I went to an integrative medicine doctor and found out that I had four Gene, gene mutations, um, and I'll get into that soon. Um, the thyroid disease, the rheumatoid arthritis, the severe adrenal fatigue, um, food sensitivities. Uh, whenever I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, um, later that year, um, I, they, they had put me on uh, several different medications for that. And later that year, my husband and I were outside. Uh, we were like, I remember in a canoe and we were going around in a canoe um, this one day and my hands started feeling really strange. And it was like, I looked at the skin on my hands and it was almost like I could see through it. It was really odd. Um, and, and I had this prickly feeling on my hands um, and later that year, I was diagnosed with skin cancer on both of my hands. And so I started researching and, and went to my naturopath about this. And she said, you got one thing that you can do is you can change your diet. And so not only was I not on dairy anymore, I had to cut out gluten. Um, I was also tested by her for celiac. Uh, and so I had to cut out the gluten. I had to cut out for, I had to um, cut out all nightshades at that point. Um, I also found out that I had a sensitivity to like blueberries, which is odd. But um, so I, my, my diet was just getting, um, you know, smaller and smaller, the less things that I could eat. Um, then my RA ended up getting worse. Uh, I, I heard about something called the Patterson program. And so I tried that. And basically, you cut out almost everything. Um, the only thing that I could eat on that diet was like, oh, and, and also, because of the thyroid disease, I had to cut out um, all cruciferous vegetables. <laughs> so um, it was just getting crazy. You know, I, I did start having a little bit of meat at that point because 
I was having to cut out so many other things, you know, I was down to just a few vegetables that I could eat. Um, because, I, and, and also because I had, um, I found out that I, I was tested for all kinds of, of gut problems. Like I said, the celiac, uh, I was, I found my, um, my naturopath found out that I had parasites, I had SIBO, I had candida. And so uh, I had to change my diet. I had to get rid of all fruits um, because of the Patterson program. I had to get rid of all fats. I had to get rid of all oils. Um, and man, it was just insane. Uh, so I then, and also I had um, my, my, um, Naturopath believed that I had fibromyalgia. Um, I had obviously with all of this going, I had severe depression. I had pretty much have I I had almost always had depression for most of my life. Um, I had anxiety. I had insomnia, like I mentioned. Um, I had pots. I I I would find for years and years, you know, that I I would get dizzy when I would stand up. It was mild for quite a while and it just started getting worse. I started having heart problems. Um, and because of, of all of the dietary restrictions and cutting out so many different kinds of food, um, I was severely malnourished. I lost lots of weight. And um, it was just, oh, friends, it was horrible. Um, in 2018, I had gone to every kind of specialist at that point, you know, um, and I, I was I was losing hope. A friend of mine told me about uh, an integrative medicine doctor um, in the Tri Cities in Washington, and so I was able to get into him to see him, and he did lots of other testing. Um, he he's the one that realized that I had these four uh, gene mutations and this methylation issue. And because of this, I was unable to, um, I was unable to de detoxify. I mean, you know, my naturopath had me detoxifying from all kinds of things. And I was tested for heavy, I had lots of heavy metals. I had all those things. Um, and so this integrative medicine doctor started me on um, glutathione IVs every week. So my husband would have to take time off uh, from work once a week, uh, you know, like three hours and drive me an hour away so that I have had, I could get this um, glutathione IV and uh, vitamin B12 shots because I was just so exhausted and miserable. And um, he was, my doctor was trying to get my liver to work because I wasn't able to de detoxify and I was just totally toxic. Um, after about six months of this, he realized that the glutathione IVs were making me worse instead of better. And so we stopped that. Um, he tried a couple of other things. I mean, you know, we did the muscle testing. We did you name it. I have, I have had every single kind of test done. And um, it got to the point where um, in March of 2019, my doctor basically told me, um, there is nothing else that I can do for you. And I don't know that anybody else can do anything for you. And I remember, I can, I can laugh about it now. Um, my husband and I were sitting in his office. I had to have my husband there, one, because I was too weak. I was unable to, to drive myself that far. Uh, and two, because of my hearing loss, I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to hear everything that the doctor said. And I told my, and, and I couldn't think. You know, I had such severe brain fog that um, for several years, my husband would have to he would have to finish all of my sentences for me because I couldn't think. I couldn't think clearly at all. Uh, it was horrible. It was embarrassing, um, but I just couldn't do anything. I, I was pretty much, it had gotten to the point where I was so sick um, in February of that of that year, February, and actually January and February of 2019. 
I had gotten so sick and so weak um, and so severely malnourished that I I could not, I did not have the strength to walk through my house some days. And um, I, I remember a couple of days where I literally would have to crawl from my bed to the bathroom um, or into the kitchen or, or to the living room. And, and I would just stay in the couch and I felt like like I had an elephant on my chest. And, and those of you who have had adrenal fatigue or chronic fatigue syndrome, you know what I'm talking about because it was just so horrible. I couldn't breathe. And I felt like I, I, whenever I would inhale, it was like, I just couldn't, I couldn't get enough oxygen. And, and, and I was so exhausted and um, it's so weak. And I, in a backtrack to uh, February of that year, it was, I think it was Valentine's day of February, um, 2019. I was in bed because I was I was bedridden most of the time. Um, I, I I would get out occasionally. I I would try to go to the lake when I could and just sit there, and just and just try to be just try to to be surrounded by anything positive. But most days I just didn't have the energy to do that at that point. So I was in bed that day and I was praying and praying and I I was. I was saying, oh God, um, you know, I think this is the end. My because I was having such real heart pain, and my husband was having to take me to urgent care over and over. Um, and they were running all kinds of tests and they couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh my magnesium and potassium and sodium levels were off all the time. So I was having to um I was having to take, you know, whatever I could to to try to manually regulate those things. You know, I I was taking um, I, I, and and my heart would just my heart rate would shoot up for no reason. Uh, so I, I was I was taking stuff for. At one point, I was on at that point, I was on thirteen different medications. It was crazy. <laughs> It was absolutely crazy. Um, so I was in bed that day and I was saying, God, I think I'm, I, I feel like I'm going to die. I, I was pretty sure that I was going to die. I was afraid to go to sleep at night. I didn't know if I was going to wake up in the morning. I didn't know if I was going to be alive the next day. And I actually had gotten to the point that I felt so horrible that I wanted to die. I was, I was almost ready. You know, I was just like, I told God that day, I said, if, you, if you're going to take me, then do it. Please do it right now. Just take me. Let me die. And it, <laughs> I, just, I remember being just so absolutely hopeless. And um, I said, but God, if you're not going to take me, if you can give me hope today, then I need you to do it. I need you to give me a sign. And um, the sign that I asked for, I, I almost have to backtrack about 20 years prior to that. Um, there was something that happened um, whenever I was married to my ex-husband. My ex-husband and I, he had gotten out of the service. We didn't have a lot of money at the time. And um, he was an eye technician. He was working for it, uh, an ophthalmologist. And they were having a big um, Christmas party. And so um, it was interesting because they were doing this Christmas party and and I didn't have anything to wear. And it was, a, it was gonna be a fancy, nice Christmas party. And so I decided that I was gonna go out and buy a dress. And we really didn't have enough money for me to do that. But I went out and I bought the dress. I, I found a dress, it was on sale, it was on clearance and there was there was something with, it was like all sales are final kind of thing. And I, I purchased the dress, spent enough money on it that I got home. I felt extremely guilty and I just kept getting, feeling more and more guilty about this. And I said, oh, Papa, I'm so sorry. I said, God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And I didn't know any better at that point um, that I started thinking about David 
And, you know, his psalm where, where he prayed, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. And I started praying that, please don't take your spirit from me. Please, please don't take your spirit from me. And I was just, I felt so guilty. I was begging and pleading. And um, it was, I, I, while I was praying this and feeling this guilt, I heard this noise outside. And I looked outside um, I, I peeked outside, I peeked out our blinds, and I could see this snow white dove. I mean, a pure white dove sitting on the railing of our front porch. And I was like, wow, you know, how often does that happen? Incredible, right? Um, we didn't have any doves. I had never seen, I had never before seen a snow white dove in you know, uh, in real life. I, 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 had, I had seen pictures of them. So I, I was like, wow, God, this is amazing. And so I said, Papa God, if this, if this is, or I said, Lord, if this is, um, if this is a sign, if you are telling me that you're not taking your spirit from me, then please let it stay out there for 24 hours. And it did. It did. We, we had to leave a couple of times and the dove would kind of hop around, you know, so that um, we weren't getting close to it, but it stayed on the railing. And then when we would come home, you know, um, it would hop away from the door, but it would stay on the railing. And the next morning it was still out there. And it was like, wow. And so, and I started wondering, is this God's sign or is there something wrong with the dove? But literally after 24 hours, it flew away. And so, um, so that was that sign. So whenever I was lying in bed on um, February 14th of 2019, I said, Lord, let me see a dove. And um, I, because I was in bed, I couldn't get up. I couldn't go anywhere. Um, and so I was just scrolling through Instagram. And I was looking at pictures on Instagram. And this picture showed up. I, you know, I, as a potter, I followed other potters. I didn't follow sculptors, but I followed I followed other potters and and I was scrolling through and I found this dove in the potter's hand, this tiny little dove in the potter's hand. And it was like, oh my goodness, is this my sign? This is my sign. And another thing that had happened a couple of years prior to that is I a friend of mine and I were talking about all of the different ways that um, all of the different names that people in the Bible had given God or that God had told them, you know, as far as who he was to them. And my friend had told me that she had been praying about that and that God told her that he was her friend, just like he was Abraham's friend. And so I was praying about it and he led me to Isaiah 64 verse 8. And that verse says, you, O Lord, are the potter and we are the clay. We are the works of your hands. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, you are my daughter, the potter, and I am your father, the potter. And it was so, so precious to me. And to see that, you know, he was saying, you, I created you to be like me in this area. I created you to be a creator just like me. And that meant so much to me. And so whenever I saw this dove sitting in the potter's hand, it was like, this is my, you know, this is obviously God speaking to me. And this would happen within 10 minutes of me praying this prayer. And this, the, the person who I was following, who created this sweet little dove, was a potter. He was not a sculptor, but um, he had just decided just this one day to create this dove and post it. And so I knew that that was God telling me, I'm going to pull you out of this. So a couple of days after that, you know, I had a little bit of hope. I still was sick. I was, I was praying though, and I was thinking, well, you know, maybe I'm going to get well, maybe I'm going to get well, because um, God's given me this sign. And that it, I was still struggling so much with being so sick that I said, God, if you're not just going to pull me out of this, not just pull me out of it so that I just survive, but if you're going to heal me in every single way, then 
I need to see a dove every day. And that was a big request. Um, I started seeing doves every single day. I would see doves on Instagram and I'm, I'm talking about, I did not use hashtags. That was a rule that I had. It was like, I'm not gonna use hashtags. I'm not gonna search for doves, um, you know, like actively search for them. God was gonna have to bring them to me. I started seeing them Instagram. I started seeing them on Facebook. I would, um, I would receive, and I started telling people my story and the days that I didn't see them somewhere, um, I, people would send them to me. I would get an email uh, with doves. I would get, I would receive stuff in the, in the mail. I would see, receive cards with doves. And so whenever I went to my doctor the last time in March and he told me, you know, back to that story, um, my husband and I were sitting there and he literally put his head in his hands and he was rocking back and forth. And he said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. There's nothing else that I can do for you. And I just don't, I don't know what else to tell you because I, he said, I was looking at all of your test results. They are off the charts. Horrible. I've never seen anything like this before. He said, I have called the company that made the test and asked them, what do I do? Because I don't know how to help this woman. And, um, and, you know, if God had not given me his promise that he was going to pull me out of this sickness a month before, that would have devastated me. I probably, you know, I probably would have gone home and just given up and said, okay, I'm done. Um, but because God had given me the promise the month before, I, I was kind of like, okay. Um, so this is, I was at the point where, the only one who could help me was God. And that's pretty amazing, you know, that he had given me the hope that it was going to be okay. It was going to be okay. Um, the last thing that the doctor said to me was um, because of the severity of my um, irritable bowel syndrome, um, he said, have you, or he said, could you tell me a little bit about your childhood? He said, did you experience any kind of trauma in your childhood? And I, I said, oh my gosh, yes. So much trauma, you know. Um, and he said, there is this program that might work for you. Um, he said, it's called the Dynamic Neural Retraining System. He said, yeah, I, I can't do this for you. You'll have to go home and look it up. Um, look it up and see if that's something that you might want to try. What I forgot to tell you um, earlier was that it had gotten so bad. Um, the IBS had gotten so bad that even though I was on uh, prescription drugs to help um, my digestive system, even those didn't work. I I was taking, I, I took everything to the maximum amount that I could possibly take. I did every kind of herbal treatment. I did, I was taking um, tons and tons of magnesium. I, was, I took everything and it had gotten to the point that my system literally shut down and um, I was having to do, and forgive me, you know, this is the way, this is the truth. I was having to do daily colonics, five gallon colonics a day because nothing else worked. And you know, the coffee enemas and everything else that everybody else does. And even those weren't working anymore. Um, and it scared me, you know, I, I was like, and, and, and so my food got to the point, I, I got down to the point where I was eating five foods. I was eating, um, I was eating a little bit of quinoa some days. I was eating um, sweet potatoes some days, but I was scared of them uh, because of what they were doing with the candida. I was eating a little bit of, I was eating rutabaga. I was eating, um, oh, a, I was eating lettuce and radishes. Um, and that was pretty much it. It was, it was bad. Actually, I wasn't even in quinoa at that point. I think I was eating um, summer squash. So that was my diet. That was my diet. 
at that point. And I was juicing every single day. Oh, let me tell you, I had tried every single kind of diet up to that point. I, I had tried, um, I tried paleo, I tried autoimmune paleo, I tried keto, I and in the keto I couldn't do it because of the dairy. I tried um what else did I try? Like I said, the Patterson program. Um I I even did a a bone broth juice fast for two weeks just to try to get my digestive system working again. I was drinking celery juice every single day and yeah you know i know i know a lot of you um still do that i understand but i did that for so many years that i can't handle celery juice anymore i don't care how good it is for me i don't want it um so anyway i went home after that doctor's appointment and i looked up the dynamic neural training re, um yeah retraining system and um, DNRS, and I started praying about it. I prayed about it, and I prayed about it, and I said, God, if you want me to do this, um, you know, because I wasn't working at the time, I hadn't been able to do any kind of work. Um, I said, if you, if you want me to do this, then I need you to pay for it. I need you to pay for all of it, because um, I need to know that this is you. I need to know that, that this is what you want me to do. So, Within 48 hours of that prayer, my husband, who is um, a church musician, he's a church organist, he had two requests for him to play for memorial services. And um, the first one, they paid him the regular going amount. The second one, um, these people had somebody, a loved one who was in a nursing home. They came from out of town. Uh, they didn't know him. There was no connections. They just had called and asked uh, the church that he was playing for at the time, is there any way that he, it, that your organist could come and play for our mother's um, memorial service? And so he did. They paid him two and a half times the regular rate that he's paid. Um, like I said, they didn't even know him. And so all of that combined was enough for the program and for shipping and handling for uh, the transcripts for the program. And so God totally took care of that. Um, like I said, I, I had been um, seeing and asking for doves every single day. I was saying them every day. And God just, as I started doing the, the DNRS program, I began that program on April um, 7th of 2019. And um, about that time, I also had been taking uh, prescription benzodiazepines for sleep. Um, my doctor did not tell me that um, he was going to cut me off cold turkey. Let me tell you, friends, don't, if you have a choice, don't ever do that. Um, because I was brain retraining and brain retraining is, um, is a challenge in, in the first place. Any of you who are doing DNRS or any other kind of brain retraining, you know that it is difficult, uh, because change in the way that you think really, uh, your brain will fight you. Your brain will fight you. And, um, it was a real challenge. Um, but then whenever my doctor cut me off of benzos, cold turkey, I started having, and going through benzo withdrawals and it was, I, I will tell you, I am, I'm, I won't sugarcoat it. It was pure hell. I've never been through anything like that before. You know, and I, I mentioned before that whenever I was a teenager, I had been suicidal, um, and that I had dealt with severe depression. That was nothing compared to, to what I went through uh, during this time. I'm thankful that I was actually doing DNRS because I had those tools to use. Um, so I I remember one day it, it was it was so bad that I literally went for two entire months without sleeping, and I'm not I'm not exaggerating. I did not sleep for two months. 
I was awake all night long. I was a total disaster. <laughs> it was, I was, I had so much anxiety that um, I would just, I couldn't handle listening to music at all. I could not handle watching television. We even tried to watch uh, the Jesus film, the Jesus movie. I couldn't handle that. I could not handle any kind of stimulation like that. Um, my husband and I started, instead of watching television in the evenings, we started um, playing games at night. And the number, you know, like if a tile, if I drew the, the tile with the number six on it, that freaked me out. Um, I couldn't handle any negative words at all. Uh, any negative words, any any kind of, um, you know, even even just seeing the word death put me in, in a total spiral. I was constantly shaking, um, and I I tried everything that I could find online to help with this. Um, after a little while, I, I guess it was. I dealt with that for several weeks, that severe anxiety. And um, a friend of mine contacted me uh, this one day and she said, hey, are you home? And I said, yeah, I'm home, but I am not in any condition to have any company over. I cannot handle being around anybody. I can't talk to anybody because of the anxiety, the state that I was in. I, I thought I was losing my mind. I had told my husband even, that at that point, I understood why people who had such se severe anxiety um, committed suicide. I, but I was afraid to do that because I thought I would go to hell if I did that. And so that scared me too. Um, I, I felt like I was completely separated from God at that point. Um, I started doing uh, some things that I had found online. Um, I, I learned about about EFT, about tapping. And I, I tried that and I was trying several other things just to calm myself down, to calm my system down. And um, and I, I think that some of the things that I was trying may have opened a door to, um, to some bad stuff. Um, during that time period, I... Um, this is very awkward. I, I believe that I had been raped by a demon. Um, that sounds crazy. I was wide awake when it happened. Um, but it was, it was horrific. Uh, so I was, and like I said, I felt like I was separated from God and I felt like maybe I had done something. Um, my friend, whenever she contacted me, she said, I'm on my way over. I'm coming over. I'm going to talk to you. And I was like, no, please don't. And she said, I'm coming anyway. And so she came over that day and that day, I remember it was six o'clock in the evening when she had gotten there and, and I had put so much, um, so much stock and hope into the doves that I was seeing every day that I was like, um, that day I hadn't seen a dove and I thought, oh no, um, I'm totally separated from God now and there's no hope for me because I hadn't seen a dove and I mean, that's, that's the state that I was in. That was a mental state that I was in. Um, so my friend arrived and my dear friend, you know who you are. If you're watching this, I thank you again from the bottom of my heart. She came over and she, she was carrying something in her hand. And she, as soon as she, as soon as I opened the door, she handed it to me and she said, I want you to have this. She said, I ordered it. Um, I ordered it like weeks and weeks ago and it finally came. And I unwrapped it, and it was it was this it was this sweet little dove, um, and so there was my daily dove, and I I just broke down and cried because I was like, oh, it's my dove, and it was. And she said, you know, um, I I ordered it weeks and weeks and weeks ago, but it finally came, and and I was just I was frustrated with the. The timing and I said the timing is so perfect and God knew God knew that I needed that that day and she said um I want to pray for you she said get down on the floor and so I sat down on the floor and because of my hearing loss um I I read lips 
Um, so I, I have no idea what she prayed over me, but she put her hands on my head and she prayed over me for a while. She probably prayed for, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. And after she was done praying, I had this peace. I had this peace come over me. And I've never experienced um, the kind of peace that I had. And the anxiety that I had had for several weeks was gone. And I have never experienced that kind of anxiety again since she prayed that, that prayer of deliverance over my mind. And so that was huge. That was, um, that was a big deal. So, um, so I began healing um, and I, I decided no matter how difficult it was, um, even though I was in stage four adrenal fatigue, um, and any of you who are familiar with adrenal fatigue, you know that uh, the Dr. Lamb talks about whenever you're in stage four, that there's no hope. And, um, you know, it, it, he pretty much says, there's not much hope for you. Um, I determined that I was going to be okay. And I know that every single promise that God gave me, he knew how severe, how bad I was and what horrible shape I was in. And that if he had not given me all of those promises, all of those devs, I probably wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't have been so determined. I wouldn't have decided I'm going to be okay. I'm going to survive this. I'm going to heal. And so I told my husband, um, you know, I had been studying all kinds of things about how to sleep um, and, and how to change my circadian rhythm and everything like that. And so I said, okay, I'm going to get up every single morning um, at the crack of dawn. I'm going to get up well. And, and, and at the time, it wasn't difficult for me to do. Um, even after several months of, of brain weight training, I still was not sleeping very much, um, but I started seeing I started seeing small shifts. Like I would sleep two hours a night, I would sleep three hours a night, and and I started telling myself it didn't matter. You know, I was going to survive it anyway. People can survive. You know, I so many of you I know you struggle with ins insomnia, and I know how difficult it is whenever you are exhausted and. And you've probably read all, all these horrible things about if you don't get enough sleep, um, you know, how it's going to affect you. I totally relate to that. I completely understand. What I did anyway is my husband and I would get up very early in the morning and um, even before the sun was up and we would start going out for a walk. I was, I was tired. I hadn't slept. I had adrenal fatigue. I had chronic fatigue syndrome. My body hurt. You know, I had rheumatoid arthritis, but I was going to get up and I was going to go for a walk. <laughs> and we would go out and we would walk two miles. And no matter how I felt, I would tell myself exactly the opposite. You know, my body was like, oh, I hurt everywhere. I'm exhausted. I can't do this. I would tell myself it doesn't matter. I'm going to do this anyway. And so I just made a total mind shift and I, and I would say, I feel good. I feel great. I am a rock star. I can do this. And um, I would even sing little songs in my head. And some of you have seen my little short video in the bathtub where I was being silly. But I literally would, would sing to myself, I feel good, you know, and I would just sing that and sing it over and over and over again to myself in my mind while my husband and I were walking. And I made sure that I was getting sunlight right in my eyes. I would not wear sunglasses in the morning, but I, I made sure that the days that it was sunny in, in Walla Walla, Washington, um, which, you know, <laughs> if you live if you live anywhere in Washington, you know what I mean whenever I say that the days when it was sunny, but I would do it anyway. I would get up even if it wasn't sunny, and we would go out and we would walk every single morning, and um, and I made that a habit, and I just and I, I would write down every day. Okay, I got I got this much sleep, and um, my my digestive system started working a little bit better slowly, gradually. It started working better and better, and I I I stopped doing. Um, the colonics. I started. I stopped doing the enemas because I didn't need to anymore. I I was still having to take stuff, 
but it wasn't it wasn't anything like it had been for years. And so I was seeing progress and and I just kept getting better and better. And I think it was in in um, July that July, um, I my husband and I, we, we, we started hiking. We were hiking more and more. And I remember there was there was one day that we um, went to the Wallawa Mountains in Oregon. And we did like an eight or nine mile hike. And, you know, again, it was just like whenever I get and I still, you know, I still have days where I wake up and I'm like, oh, man, I don't feel like doing anything. But it's all about what I tell myself. And friends, it's all about what you tell yourself. Those of you who are doing brain retraining, those of you who um, who are struggling with this stuff, stop telling yourself how you stop, stop giving power to how you feel. If you feel bad, stop giving power to that. You say exactly the opposite thing. And that's what I did. I said the opposite thing. I was like, this is not, this is not my truth. My truth is I want to feel awesome. And I want to I want to be able to hike because I love hiking. I love being out in nature. And so um, my husband and I would go walking in the morning, and then some days I would even go out to the lake, and I would I would walk another mile or two just to be out there in nature. And and just um, I I started you know one of one of the tools that I had was I would start praising God for everything everything that came to mind. I would praise Him and praise Him. And so. Um, all of those things that I mentioned before, all of those things that I mentioned about having, um, I I was healed from almost all of these. There, there are a couple of things that I'm still dealing with, like the hearing loss. But um, the most incredible thing lately is um, I'll be in the middle of a meeting online and I'll have this loud burst of noise happen in my ears. And it's like, whoa, you know, and it shocks me because it's this... And I know that God is is healing my ears. There was one day um, when we were still in in Washington um, in 2019, and I, I had been seeing a chiropractor, and I was driving on on the way to the chiropractor, and I, and I was like, "Papa God, can I see a dove, please? Can I see a dove while I'm driving?" And I thought that I saw one up on a, a telephone wire, but I wasn't positive. And I said, "Papa." Um, if you're going to restore my hearing, if I'm going to have my hearing someday, um, if, if it's going to be totally restored, then I ask that you would let me not just kind of see the dove um, over here, but let me see it fly over my hood. And literally, right after I prayed that, this dove flies right over my hood of the car. And <laughs> I go to the chiropractor and I'm just crying, crying. Oh, I'm going to have my hearing back, you know. And um and God has done that several times because I, I, I kind of feel like like John the Baptist at times, you know, um, please don't get upset with me. But all right, is this really going to happen? You know, um, and it would get again, you know, is this really going to happen? And so um, God has shown me several times. Yes, your hearing is going to be restored. So I know that's coming. I know that's coming. Um, but there are things that I've been healed from, friends, that the doctor said, you will never heal from. You don't heal from autoimmune diseases. I had been diagnosed with seven autoimmune diseases at one time. And um, for the most part, they're gone. You know, you don't heal from stuff like that. But I have, I have, because God has healed me from those things. And I have refused to accept them. You know, occasionally the devil will come back and try to put something like that on me. And it was interesting. Um, it was interesting back uh, in 2020, I think it was, in November of 2020, I was out hiking um, with my husband and a couple of people. And um, and it was like, in the, I was hiking along and my elbow started hurting. And then my shoulder started hurting. And then my, my hip started hurting. I was like, what's going on? I have not had rheumatoid arthritis. I'm healed from this, you know? And, and I was praying about it. I was saying, Papa God, what is happening? And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And he said, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I said, that's right. It is. So what is this happening? What is going on in my body? And so I, I said to my, and, and I remembered, you know, I have the mind of Christ. And so I said to my elbow, the Holy Spirit 
Elbow, the Holy Spirit lives in you. You should not be hurting. Stop hurting right now. In the name of Jesus, you stop hurting. And the pain went away. And, you know, I did the same thing with my shoulder. And I did the same thing with my hips. And the pain went away. And it was like, wow. And I started, you know, I started following people like Andrew Womack and Curly Blake who talk about our authority in Christ and the fact that we have authority that God has given us over our bodies to heal. You know, we shouldn't even be sick. But there are so many people, We've our culture has just um, bought into the lie that we're supposed to be sick and it's natural. But it's not natural, you know. And God doesn't want any of us sick. I want to share with you a few other amazing, miraculous things that God has done for me. And by the way, I have seen doves pretty much every single day um, since since that day. Um, I even started asking not just to see like morning doves, but to be able to see white doves again. And um, although I have not seen them in person, what, one thing that was interesting is one day whenever my husband and I were um, taking a walk around the neighborhood um, in Walla Walla, we walked around the corner and we and we walked past this house and there were like 20 white doves that lived at this house that I had never seen before. I mean, we had been living there for almost 11 years and I had never seen these doves there. There were like 20 of them in this yard. And so every time that we would walk around, um, you know, the two miles around um, um, Walla Walla College Place, I would see these white doves and I was like, wow, you know, how cool is that? That all of these white doves live right around the corner for me and I never knew about it. I never knew until I started this healing journey. Um, a couple of other things, uh, you know, as I started healing, um, I started learning some truths about um, about who God says I am and, and um, about certain religious beliefs that I had had for years. And God started showing me the truth about a lot of things. And I, and I started praying about the Holy Spirit. And I said, um, Papa God, do I have, do I have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Because, um, you know, there are people who, who speak in tongues and, and I don't know if that's true or not. I had been taught um, in the religion that I was in previously that in the, in the church and denomination that I was in, that speaking in tongues was um, was demonic. That anybody who spoke in tongues, they were filled with demons and they were speaking, you know, um, th that that was the devil speaking through them. And so I was praying about it and I, and, um, I said, Papa, if, if, if I have the Holy Spirit and I don't have to speak in tongues to prove that I have the Holy Spirit, would you show me this? And this was back whenever I, um, I guess it was, it was probably the during that first year that I was healing in in 2019. Whenever I was praying this prayer, and so one night I had taken some, um, I had taken some over the counter sleeping stuff, and I went to bed. And even over the counter stuff wasn't helping me sleep at that point. It was really messed up. But I, but I took some that night and I was lying in bed um, wide awake and I, I, with my eyes closed and it was so weird, but the, like this typewriter type started showing up in my mind and it was in, the, in red, like and it was typing out Micah and, and then it said um, Micah 3.8 and I was like, what is that? You know, so I got up out of bed and I went and looked it up because I had no idea what that was. I went and looked it up and it says, um, but as for me, I am filled with power, with the spirit of the Lord. I am filled with justice and strength. And I had prayed for um, for the power of in indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, Micah 3.8 types across in my brain. In my, it, it was like I could see it in my eyelids or something. And so God gave me a vision and I looked it up and there it is. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Awesome. You know? And so I knew that that was God telling me, absolutely, my daughter, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, 
But God kept doing things like that. I, I had an online meeting with a friend and um, she introduced me to another woman and, who had had um, an autoimmune disease. And we started talking and she said, Caprice, um, well, actually we talked that day and then, and then a couple of days later she contacted me and she said, Caprice, God woke me up um, in the middle of the night with a message for you. She said, God wants you to know that your healing is coming in the bridal chamber with him. And I said, what exactly does that mean? And she said, he wants you to know that as you draw closer and closer to him in your relationship with him, that's where your healing is coming from. And she said, he also wanted me to tell you to start reading Song of Solomon because that is his love letter to you. And so I started reading Song of Solomon and I came across how, you know, it's, it's um, the, between Solomon and his wife and how much he loved her. And he called her his dove. And I thought, oh my goodness, how cool is that? And so um, those of you who um, do brain retraining, you know a little bit about um how we do visualizations in, in imagining, um, we, we, we imagine our future, we imagine what our, our healed self looks like. And so I was doing that for a while. And then I started feeling impressed that I needed to do visualizations on um, Bible stories. And so, or, or even just inviting Jesus into my visualizations. And so, you know, I, I started imagining um, going hiking with Jesus and stuff like that. And, and as I did that, before I did that, I would pray and I would say, please, Lord, let me see your character through these. Let me see your character. And the Bible started coming to life for me when I did that. There was one visualization that I did, and I always prayed before, and I said, Lord, I want you to lead. I want you to be in charge of these visualizations. And um, there was one that I was doing, and I remember sitting there um, in this visualization where Jesus is talking to um, his disciples, and I'm sitting there with them. And, and he looks at Peter, and he says, Peter, um, you know, your name was Simon, but it's now Peter. It's the stone that I'm going to build my church on. And he looks at James and John and he says, you two are the sons of thunder. And, and then he looks at me and he says, you Caprice are my little dove. And um, it was, <laughs> it was interesting because I hadn't even thought about that. You know, I hadn't even considered that, but he told me, you're my little dove. And it just went along with everything. And so I started praying about that more and more. And, and in this visualization, he said, you're my little dove because you have my spirit in you. And you remember whenever Jesus was, was baptized, the Holy Spirit came down and landed upon his head and um, remained on him. And it was like, wow. And he said, you, you are like me, and you have my spirit within you, and you are my little dove. And um, that was just so precious to me. Um, he, he gave me several other um, <laughs> he gave me other I don't know what to call them exactly visions, I suppose. Um, and I don't know if I should share them with you. They were kind of private. Um, but it was it was incredible to um, to experience those things. He started revealing other things to me. Um, there was one day that that after we had moved here to Colorado, I was praying again about about the the Holy Spirit and um, and I I was feeling frustrated because I felt like my heart wasn't in the right place, and I was asking him to forgive me and whatever and. And I, I was telling, I was, I was asking him to, to talk to my heart and because I was still frustrated about, you know, all of these other friends had, had 
than speaking in tongues. And again, I was like, well, is this really what I'm supposed to do? I don't know. And so um, while I was praying about it, I was impressed to look up and I, my mom had given me um, some, some towels, some t kitchen towels. And it was like, I looked up and I noticed, and I, I, I wanted to show you this. So um, she had given me these kitchen towels. And so at the very bottom of this, this was hanging down from my oven. Know who you are and act accordingly. And, and while I was praying about the Holy Spirit, I, I looked up and I saw that and it was like, I had never even, I had never even read what all was on this. I mean, this towel is about cats, you know? And it was like, oh my goodness, the Lord is speaking to me about that. And so um, anyway, um, another thing that happened that I would like to share with you recently. Um, last month I was praying, um, I was just frustrated uh, with some things that were happening. God started doing some really super incredible things this year. Um, after being healed of, of so many things, I'm going to read that list to you again. Allergies. I can eat anything I want. I have absolutely no migraines. I have no sinus infections. I have added all foods back into my diet, all foods. Anything that I want to eat, I can eat. And I don't have any bad reactions to that. Um, the the IBS irritable, irritable I can't even say irritable bowel syndrome don't have that anymore don't have constipation um, the blood sugar issues I'm fine I don't have any methylation issues um, and I, I don't have um, rheumatoid arthritis I don't have chronic fatigue syndrome or adrenal fatigue syndrome the gene mutations. Um, I have not gone back to a doctor. I have to. I have to say that I have not gone back to a doctor um, since that day in March of 2019. But I have. I I can tell, and I believe with all of my heart that God has healed me from all of those gene mutations because I have no problems detoxifying. My body is fine. Um, I don't have the gut issues. Any of the gut issues that I had, like SIBO. Um, candida. I don't have pots. I don't. I don't stand up and get dizzy anymore. I don't um, feel like I'm gonna fall down. I don't have heart problems anymore. Um, I absolutely don't have anxiety or depression anymore. No fibro. Um, no celiac. I can eat whatever I want. Like I said. Oh, this is another awesome thing. So um, last year, I had had. Um, I mentioned that previously I had had skin cancer on my hand. Um, it started coming back. It started coming back and I had had several spots on my hand, um, especially there was one big spot on my hand that had been there for years. And I didn't want to go to a doctor. Um, I especially didn't want to go back to a doctor after I started DNRS and started healing. And so I had just been praying about it after watching Andrew Womack and Curry Blank Blake. Um, I started commanding it to leave. I started speaking over it and saying, you know, you're going to dry up and die in the name of Jesus. And what happened was last summer, it started getting bigger. <laughs> and I, it was basically an open wound that it had been there for years and years, never healed, and it started getting bigger. Um, it started scabbing over into this big, nasty, white, grayish scab, and it was just getting bigger and bigger. Um, my husband and I were on our way to Washington to see my son, and, um, and I had been praying over it, and it fell off in the car on the way to Washington. It has never come back. I don't have any skin cancer anymore. Um, so that's incredible. Also, again, you know, most people don't just heal of skin cancer. <laughs> so um, I just praise God because it's just amazing. I mean, just recounting this right now, it's like, wow, you know. Um, so then I was going to tell you this also. So um, I started going to a church that I just loved. Um, when, after we had moved back here, I've been praying about it. And God had shown me this church to go to. So we started going again. He asked, I prayed about it. He answered my prayers by, by giving me um, 
five different signs that he wanted me to go there. So I, I started going there and went to their Bible study and, um, and they do an integrative Bible study. And so I started learning more and more on my own. This is not something where they tell you what you need to believe, but um, where you just discover it on your own through using lots of different Bible study tools, you know, like um, a concordance and, um, you know, you can look up all kinds of um, commentaries and stuff like that. And also, you know, doing my visualizations where I would, I would read um, whatever section that I was going over and then I would visualize being there. And God just started really opening my eyes to things that I had never noticed whenever I had read those things before. And so anyway, I was going to this church and I loved it. I absolutely adored this church. But um, my husband and I went to Andrew Womack's Healing University last August. And um, and right after that, uh, right after that, we got back and the pastor started preaching about how they, he literally said uh, the Sunday after I had gotten back um, that Saturday night, he said, there is no such thing as Healing University. And um, one of my friends, I told them that I went, um, I found out later, I hadn't realized that that church didn't believe um, that God wants everybody well. And so that was a real struggle for me. He preached about that over and over, um, just about every week. And I was so frustrated. <laughs> I was just so, so frustrated and disappointed because it was like, Papa God, I thought that you brought me here for a reason. So in January of this year, um, I continued to go to church, uh, but I kind of backed away from a lot of things. I stopped going to um, some of the groups that we had been attending. And um, one of my friends reached out to me I, I, and asked why I wasn't attending some of these things. And I said, well, honestly, it's because I feel like God wants me to create a ministry. You know, I've been doing these videos for about a year now, and, um, and God had put it on my heart to do this. And because I know that God wants other people well. He doesn't say, I'm not what he's, I'm not special. You know, I mean, yeah, absolutely, I'm special because he loves me. But he loves everybody. He loves you the same way, you know, and, he, and you're just as special to him. And I always thought, I'd always been told that, and, and I believed that God wanted me sick because he needed me to be sick for a reason. He needed me to be sick in order to heal me because I had, I had been, I had been so bad, you know, I had been so rebellious and I, I had gotten a divorce and I had destroyed the the church plant. And, you know, I had, I had gotten pregnant when I was a teenager. And, and because of all of these bad, horrible things that I had done, um, God needed for me to be sick in order for me to be saved. And, and that's what a lot of churches teach. And the truth is I started learning um, on this healing journey. I started I started studying and learned that 75% um, of all people who are sick, who have chronic illnesses, are women. 75%. So it's like, well, how come women are worse than men? Why does God need for women to be sick more than he needs for men to be sick? And um, it's interesting because, you know, a whole lot of the people who push that idea aren't even sick. They don't deal with it themselves. Um Anyway, God started showing me it has absolutely nothing to do with him wanting me sick. It has everything to do with the fact that we don't renew our minds to the truth of his word. Over and over and over in scripture, you can read about, you know, I am the God who heals you. And, and you know, Isaiah 53 talks about Jesus going to the whipping post. And, and you know what? Don't just read it in your Bible. Grab your concordance and read every single word and what every single word means. Because it's not just that Jesus died to take away all of our sadness and pain, um, you know, our emotional pain. But it talks about in, in Isaiah 53, and I, I think it's in verse 4. I may be incorrect, but it's in those around in there. Um, he talks about, um, you know, that... He took on not just our, I think the word is grief. When you look up the word grief, it's not just grief. It also means all of our sicknesses and our diseases. Jesus took those on himself. So why would he take sickness and disease upon himself, just like he took sin upon himself, if we're supposed to still carry it and, and 
and bear it ourselves. That doesn't make any sense, does it? And so, you know, I started reading and, and realizing it's God's will for me to be well. And, and the more that I began understanding it and the more that I realized, you know, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And whenever you read about the temple in the Old Testament, you couldn't have anything in there that defiled it. Nothing sick. You know, whenever they brought um, lambs to be sacrificed, it had to be perfect and without blemish. And, you know, if my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and I am I am the righteousness, I am the righteousness of God, I am ri the righteousness of God in Christ, then why am I sick? Why am I carrying sickness and disease? And so... As God started showing me this, I started recognizing and realizing, you know, I'm supposed to be well. I'm supposed to be well. And so um, all the stuff that I was learning in that church that I was hearing was just like, this is not true because God's showing me that he wants me well. And so whenever my, this friend reached out to me and, and I told her, it's difficult for me to continue going to a church that is completely contrary to teaching everything against what I believe and what I'm what my ministry is about you know because God has, has shown me he told me back whenever I first started this journey he started revealing to me I want you to teach other people about this I want you to teach other people that I want them well because this is part of the gospel this is part of the gospel and so my friend um when I said I, I have a hard time with this and she said well, basically, um, you shouldn't be teaching because you don't divide the word of God properly. And that hurt. <laughs> but at the same time, um, I knew the truth. I knew the truth. Um, so I, I was praying about it that day because I was, I was just upset about it. It hurt me a lot. And it's interesting, I had not mentioned, you know, all the way back to my friend who gave me this dove um, when we moved away. I had, I, we were still in contact, but we hadn't talked a whole lot. And that day, she reached out to me. And that in that day in the beginning of January of this year, she reached out to me and she said, um, hey, God just put on my heart to send you this article that I just read. And... Um, <laughs> It's like, I read the article and I'm just crying because it's like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Papa. Because the article is about how whenever Jesus went, like to, in some places, he went to heal people. Um, you remember the little girl that he went to heal and he walked into her room and he closed the door. And the reason they closed the door is because there was unbelief out there. And... Um, and God started showing me through this article, I want you to close the door on unbelief. And it was a very difficult decision for me to make to, um, to step out of that church. But it was something that I needed to do. Um, this friend had also told me that I shouldn't be teaching according to James 3.1 because teachers will be... Um, they'll be... <laughs> Held accountable, you know, more so than other people. And so it was like, okay, Papa God, what do you want me to do? Because I don't know what to do at this point. And within 48 hours of my friend sending me, sending me that text, and then my other friends sending me the, the message saying, close the door on unbelief. Within 48 hours, I had two friends. Um, that I was friends with years ago, uh, before I had ever moved to Washington and lived in Washington for um, those 11 years. And, and I had been out of touch kind of with these friends, these two friends, and they weren't even, they didn't even know each other. Within 48 hours of each other and those other two messages happening, they reached out and asked me, would you, um, is there a Bible study that we can join? Could we join a Bible study? Would you teach us? You know, I mean, they, they asked me this individually. And how often does that happen? I mean, how often do you get somebody that, that reaches out to you? I mean, one person reaches out to you and says, hey, would you teach me 
And would you, would you give me a Bible study? So these two ladies reached out to me and it was like, oh my goodness. Wow, God, you know? And so then I started praying and and I, we found out that our, our rent was going to go up. And I knew that God wanted me to teach people and help people because I had already I had already decided and I had already determined that I was going to um, start creating more videos and that I was going to uh, create these podcasts. You know, if, I don't, if you're not familiar with this, um, I do podcasts on the book of John. And basically, there's, they're visualizations. They're not really long, but I do a deep study on on the book of John, on, on a section of John, and then I do a visualization and I lead you through a visualization. And um, you can find those on Spotify and on Apple. So I've been doing those and and I just um, I had my husband help me create a website. It's called Little Dove Ministries and you can guess why I did that. Um, and so I just started doing that. And, and then I was talking to several friends of mine and, and I just, I started feeling like maybe I should be coaching and I have a, a group a group of friends who are coaches and and so I started praying about that and I put out a fleece and I said um, Papa God if you want me to be a coach then um, have have somebody just flat out ask me straight out ask me will you coach me and literally <laughs> you know within a, a day or two of that um, Somebody asked me, will you coach me? And so uh, I said, yeah. And and within uh, a week, actually it wasn't even within a week, it was within another day or two, um, I had a, one other client. that, And so it was like, wow, okay, so I'm supposed to be a coach. So that's the reason that, um, you know, you find coaching information on my ministry page is because I do that too. Um, and, and that's the way that God decided to provide, um, to help me, um, you know, pay the rent, um, because it was going up. And so it has just been amazing because God keeps doing those things. He just keeps creating these miracles. And so, um, a couple of weeks after that, I was, I was struggling and because I was, I was still upset about, um, you know, the thing with, it's, it's been kind of overwhelming. I also, so anyway, I was praying and struggling with that and, and the fact that I thought about, okay, I think I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go to school to be a life coach minister. And so I, am, I started back to school um, last month to be a life coach minister. And so I'm doing that too, along with my ministry and my, um, you know, my videos and podcasts and coaching and so, going to school and I was praying that day um, and I, I was just upset and I, I was saying, Papa, I feel kind of overwhelmed with all of this. And that I was I was praying in my mind and I was saying, I, I don't feel like I can even pray out loud. I'm so frustrated and I'm having such a hard time today because it was just stressful. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff and then walking away from a church that I had grown to love. Um, and, and walking away from those friends and just closing the door on unbelief like God told me to. And the Holy Spirit spoke sweetly and gently to my heart that day. And he said, Caprice, I want you to open your mouth. And I was like, okay. And literally, as soon as I opened my mouth, this language started pouring out of me. And it was strange. Um, it was unusual. <laughs> Those of you who, who pray in tongues, you know what I'm talking about. And it was like, because I knew that I wasn't making it up. Because it, there, it, because of my hearing loss, I have a difficult time with, with pronouncing or, or saying R's in, in R, that's sign language R. I, I had a hard time. I have a difficult time um, saying and pronouncing R's. And whenever, I, even way back whenever I was in high school and I took Spanish, I could never roll my tongue. And those of you who speak Spanish, you know what I'm talking about. And um, in this prayer language, 
it's natural for me to do. It's easy for me to do, but I can't do it in the natural. I mean, I can't do it whenever I'm trying, whenever I'm trying to speak. And, and um, so that's one way that I, and, and it would take me a long time to really try to get all of the um, stuff out. You know, I would have to, I would have to work on really making up those kinds of sounds, you know, and syllables and whatever. And so God gave me, um, God gave me my prayer language. And so um, it's just been a really incredible ride, you know, um, that I wanted to share that with you. For those of you who, who are wondering about, you know, does one, does God want you to heal? Absolutely, he wants you to heal. Two, um, brain retraining is awesome. If I had not done brain retraining, I would not be here today. I really believe that. Um, three, you know what? God is a God of miracles and he loves and adores us so much. And, um, you know, he, he's just shown me so many incredible signs and wonders. Um, and I don't even, I don't even deserve it. There's, there are many more, you know, I was trying to look through some of the things that I journaled about. Um, and it would take me, it would take me several other hours, several more hours to go over those things. But, um, this just gives you a taste of, of what I've been through in, over the last couple of years. And, and the fact that, um, God continues to heal every part of me. And I know I'm so excited about what's coming. I don't know what all is coming, but just the way that he has just, created all of these things and revealed all of these these things to me about who he wants me to be i'm finally finally stepping into and you know um if you go back and and figure out that i graduated it graduated in 1990 and i got pregnant when i was 16 you have an idea of how old i am and I'm finally figuring out who i am you know i'm finally stepping into my identity in christ and 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 into my authority in Christ. And man, it's exciting. It's so exciting. And I know that he has such good plans for you, the way, the way that he has shown me that he has good plans for me. Um, anyway, if you are, are, are struggling, friend, if you're struggling and you want hope and you want help, I'm here. And um, you know, reach out. I I would love to I would love to coach you. If you don't want to do that, you know what? All of my videos, my podcasts are free. And um, again, you know, I I follow people like Andrew Womack. I follow Curry Blake. Um, I did the DNRS program. I also did um, Be in Health. That was helpful for me. Um, to learn how the enemy works. It, it was very helpful for me to learn that there are um, some spiritual roots to disease and a whole lot of, a whole lot of that is, is often based on, um, you know, the trauma that we experience and, and the negativity that we experienced um, through that trauma, whether it's, in most, most disease is, I think that they figured out now that almost all disease begins in the brain, almost all of it. Um, there are some things, you know, that are that are a little bit different. Um, obviously, car accidents uh, are trauma that did not begin in the brain, but though it can injure your brain, of course, um, and there can be chemical things that happen. Um, oh, yes, that's also correct. I did have um, severe, e or I had EMF sensitivity. Um, I couldn't even have. I couldn't hold my phone. I forgot about that. Um, and and I, I couldn't handle the Wi-Fi being on. I would get headaches from it. Uh, we had to get rid of our metal bed because it was a conductor of electricity. And I felt miserable. I just ached. And and so um, the EMF sensitivity, that was, a, that was a big deal that I overcame. And also um, multiple chemical sensitivity was something else that I had. I did not have it as badly as a lot of people. Um, it was mild, but it was bad enough that I couldn't use um, most, I didn't use most detergents. I couldn't have candles in my house. Uh, smells were just extreme um, for me. And 
you know, it was bad enough that I could go for a hike and walk by somebody and was like, wow, uh, what kind of detergent did they use, you know, or even their dryer sheets. So um, those were also things that I overcame. Anyway, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a journey. And I can tell you that um, as hard as it's been, it's been one of the most difficult things that I've ever done in my life. It has also been one of the most rewarding things. And, you know, I'm reminded of Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts I have toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of, and, and he wants us to prosper. He wants us to heal. He wants us, he wants so many good things for us. And he's just so good, friends. He's so good. And he loves you and he wants you well. God wants you well. And so do I. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this. Um, I know it's long, but um, it's just so exciting what God has done for me. And I know he wants that for you too. God bless your friends.